All right. Hello, everyone. How's it going? My name is Elias, and this is Pira. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be doing a book haul. I'm just showing you guys all the books I have accumulated in the past um, two to three months or so. It's a pretty good selection. I've read three to four books in this pile already, and a lot of these books actually are all fantasy because after the splurge and spree that I went on reading about Robin Hobb and her books, I went and read it to decide and find out more books similar in that vein, in that style, in the storytelling. And there were so many recommendations and I was just in this mindset going on this binge to find similar books to Robin Hobb so that during the come down, when I do finish the series, I have these books to fall back and rely on. However, as I started one of these books, these recommendations, it's not really giving or hitting me in the right feels, I want to say, but we'll get into that. So before we get further into the video, a message from today's video sponsor. Thank you to Native for sponsoring today's video. So fun fact, I actually already used Native in my daily life. I really like all of their products, especially their deodorant and body wash. All right, so I chose three deodorant scents. I chose citrus and herbal musk, eucalyptus and mint, and lastly, my favorite that I use, cucumber and mint. Cucumber and mint is my favorite because it smells the best. The scent itself is also really light and fresh while not being too sweet at the same time. What's really great is that all of their deodorant is paraben and aluminum free and vegan and cruelty free. And on another note, Native also offers a plastic free version with their deodorant using the same formula but with more sustainable packaging. Native also has a limited cabin collection with scents such as cinnamon, toasted marshmallow. So if you want to fully embrace your fall autumnal needs and scents, then look no further because Native has all the scents you need. Native also has body washes and toothpaste and I chose their charcoal body wash, which is a scent I've never used let alone smell before. For, but listen, I was so surprised because who knew charcoal could smell so divine. So typically three deodorants would be around $39, but if you use my link and code Elias2, you can get them for $26, which is around 33% off. Also with my code, you can get 20% off of any body wash or toothpaste as well. Everything will be linked down below and thank you once again to Native for sponsoring today's video. Okay, and with that being said, let's go ahead and get straight into the books. First one up, we have The Goblin Emperor by Katherine Addison. So I actually got the mass market paperback version. I for one thought that market mass paperbacks were really hard to read just because of the smell. I don't know, they all smell sort of the same in that it's really cheap, funky, musky smell, if you get what I mean. And they're all really thick and they have like these really small fonts, right? That's what I was thinking. However, I feel like it's just a paperback, but condensed. And it does sort of give you that warm, homey, cozy vibe. And I actually sped through like three different paperbacks in a span of a week, which I'll get into later. And honestly, it was just really fast just going through and binging all of them. And I feel like this would be no different. It does sound interesting. It follows a young half goblin who is a son to the emperor. However, when his brother and father are killed in an accident, of course, we all know it's an assassination, right? He must sort of step up and assume the identity and the role of the emperor. However, of course, because he is the youngest son being really naive with a heart of gold, he sort of has to traverse through the treacherous politics and government around um, the courts and try to stay alive because his family was assassinated. For nothing but great things, it's also a standalone as well. And so yeah, looking forward to this one. All right, so another book I picked up, another popular recommendation on Reddit is The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. So this is yet again, another market mass paperback. Why is it called market mass paperback? Is it because it's cheaper to just produce an influx, um, a huge quantity of these paperbacks because they're just cheaper to produce? I don't know. Um, that's just the definition that I thought of when it came to the term market mass paperback. If you know what the term actually is, you can let me know down in the comments below. So another market mass paperback that is fantasy, that is giving sort of like Robin Hood vibes. It follows this young orphan whose life is, you know, ultimately very bad, very harsh, and it's terrible. However, he falls under the tutelage of a gifted con artist. And so he soon grows up to be the leader of this group called the Gentleman Bastards. And that's pretty much all I know about it. It's giving me Robin Hood vibes. And a lot of people have said that the writing is sort of like the characters and how they are developed in the book is somewhat similar to Robin Hobb and her characters. I heard this is like the first book in a huge series. So we'll have to see. All right, last and not least, but the most popular recommendation from Reddit is The Curse of Chalion by Lois McMaster Bejold. So this one follows an older gentleman who is somewhat scarred and coming back from a different country after he was sort of falsely imprisoned and tortured and betrayed by those closest to him. 
I'm getting major vibes from a Count of Monte Cristo in here. And so he goes back to his homeland where he once served as a page and becomes sort of like a secretary tutor to this powerful family who are then brought into the court, into the main kingdom. And so while there at the royal court, he comes face to face not only with his enemies, but the people who put him in prison, all the while wielding a super dangerous, deep, dark, forbidden magic. And so with all this in mind, he has to navigate the treacherous, dangerous roads of the political courts. I actually have started this book and I was 94, 95 pages in. Those 94, 95 pages took me around, I want to say seven to 10 days to read. And for me personally, that is sort of unheard of. Usually I can like kick back 100 pages in a day, in a few hours even, right? But to not even hit the 100 page mark with this book, not even in like seven to 10 days, there's obviously something going on. So many people on Reddit, on forums have said that this is the book that gave him the most Robin Hobb vibes. In some ways, I can agree. However, for me, this book is just so damn slow. Everything about it so far is just so tiring, so sleepy. Like every single time I read a page from this book, I'm just immediately put in this trance of just sleepiness and drowsiness. I don't know what's going on, but this was the most popular recommendation in terms of like similar books to Robin Hobb. I think I'm just gonna put it down for now and wait until I actually finish. You know, all the books in the realm of the Elderling series, but Robin Hobb before, I even pick this one up because there is just this huge decline of interest for me going to this book already as is. And so we'll have to see, TBD I guess. Please let me know down in the comments below if you have actually read and enjoyed this book. Um, yeah, I would love to know. All right, the next book I picked up is The Rock Eaters by Brenda Panetto. So this is actually a collection of short stories. And the main reason I picked this one up is because I'm actually in another book club in real life, not related to anything booktube or any social media in general. So when I moved to LA, I actually was on a Bumble BFF and I've met a couple people since. And so amongst those people, I've actually made some friends. And so with those people, a couple from Bumble BFF, we decided to start a book club and call ourselves the Bumble BFF Book Club. This is our first book. We've met like maybe a couple times since just discussing and it's just really cute and I really like it. And so far I am enjoying the short story collection. The author weaves elements of like fantasy, science fiction, and magical realism in order to tell stories tackling with racism, class, xenophobia, and immigration. There are a lot more but I've only read half of the book. So, so yeah, this is just another book that I picked up. I've actually never heard about this book in the first place but thanks to the Bumble Book Club, I now have. So there you go. So the next book that I picked up is Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. This one I picked up after I went on one date with this boy. We went to the bookstore and he said that this was a book that he really, really enjoyed. And so, so yeah, on that date to the bookstore, we sort of like swapped each other's favorite books. I think he got Pure Nessie and I got this book. So yeah, it was really cute. All I know about this book is that it deals with the trope of fake dating. I think it's just been a long while since I've read a book about fake dating in general. And it's been a while, I think, since I've read a queer gay romance story, but really looking forward to it. All right, so the next book that I picked up is Clown in a Cornfield 2, Friendo Lives. This one is a sequel to Clown in a Cornfield. It's one of those books where I never thought we would ever get a sequel, but here we are. We're getting a sequel and it's really surprising to me in a good way because usually in the horror genre when it comes to young adults, I feel like we don't really get sequels, let alone in that slasher genre category. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really excited to see what new story um, Adam kicks up in this book because in the first book, it was just really fun. I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it like four out of five. This was another slasher surprise. I think this one is a bit longer than the first book. This one is like coming in at 400 pages, which for a sequel, I think is pretty good. So there's a lot of meat in here and I'm excited to see what the author does with that meat. Slashing, dicing, burning, killing. I'm here for it. So, all right, the next book that I got is The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the last book in the trilogy for the Inheritance Games. I honestly cannot even begin to tell you what actually happened in the second book. I think I finished that second book in like a day or so, and it's just one of those books that I'll have to probably go online to read the summary of actually what happened, what went on in the second book. I know that this trilogy in general has become really popular on Book Talk and it has caused rifts, caused discussions and backlash and talk back because people are here shipping these two boys with this one girl. However, I honestly could care less. I think when I talked about that book in a previous wrap up, how I didn't really care about who she ended up with and I was fine in the second book, um, on who she ended up with. I got comments where people were disagreeing and they're like, I really liked her with the other guy. He was like, better for her, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, these kids, they're 16 and 17 years old. It seems like this relationship is their first. I mean, hey, kudos to them. Maybe they'll get married in this one. We'll see, maybe they'll break up and she'll end up with the other guy. 
I don't even know. I'm rather looking forward to this because I do like Jennifer Lynn Barnes as an author. I actually read and enjoyed her previous books before as well. The notable ones would be The Fixer Duology, which we were robbed of, of the third book. There's also another set of thriller books that she's written called The Natural Series, which I loved and enjoyed as well. So Jennifer Lynn Barnes, she's not new to me. However, she's new to a lot of people and I feel like you guys should check out her other books as well. They're just thoroughly enjoyable to read and so I would definitely recommend reading those ones as well. Alright, so the next book I picked up is Girl Forgotten by Karen Slaughter. And so this is another thriller from my queen, queen of thrillers in general actually, Karen Slaughter. She actually has written a couple of my favorite thrillers of all time. There's just something different about her books, her thriller books in general, just because she makes you care about these characters and she just adds so much nuance and layers to their developments, their flaws, that they just seem so real. Even though the mysteries that surround these characters and the twists that happen are super like one of the most far-fetched twists I've ever read in like any thriller. It's just so wild and poignant and visceral with just everything that happens with the characters and the stories. This is a sequel I believe to Pieces of Her. Again, never thought we would be getting a sequel from her standalone thrillers, but hey, I'm not complaining. I literally love everything that she's written so far, and I'm actually planning on doing a video, I think sometime next year, where I read a lot of her backlist titles. All right, so this next book, I actually saw this book a couple of times in different bookstores, and I was just like, hmm, it's a sign. The cover, it's interesting. It's giving me gothic, dark academia vibes, and I never really knew what it was about until a couple weeks ago, I looked it up on what it was about and I was definitely intrigued. And then I saw this book at a bookstore and I was just like, you know what, fuck it, I'm just gonna get it. And so here it is. This one is Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Miro. It's giving me middle game. I don't know if you guys have read that book, but it's one of my favorite science fiction books up to date. And this one is sort of similar in the fact that it follows these two characters, two teenagers who have these unusual abilities and both are being hunted by a figure of darkness, a man made of smoke. That's pretty much all I know. It takes place in like the late 1800s and it follows them traveling to these different places like London and Tokyo. And these two kids have the ability to sort of mend and heal broken flesh. And one of them, I think, like emits a strange blue light from his skin. And so yeah, that's pretty much all I know about this thick one. All right, so this next one I picked up from The Ripped Bodice, a bookstore here in LA. And the first one is Paladin's Grace by T. Kingfisher. This one um, I heard is somewhat polarizing in terms of people either really loving it or really, really hating it. That's what the bookseller told me, I think, from what I can remember, but I'm very curious to see what the whole discourse is about. I've actually seen and heard other books written by T. King Fisher before, and to me, she's more of like a notable horror writer, and this is fantasy, so I really don't know what to think. I've actually have yet to read a T. King Fisher book, even though I do own a couple of her other horror novels already. This one follows a young paladin who's gone, like died, and he's just really distraught and in grief. However, one day he sort of crosses path with this fugitive named Grace and witnesses an assassination. And obviously, you know how those go, you know, wrong place, wrong time, yada yada and all that. And I'm actually pretty surprised that a bookstore just full of romance books carries a fantasy book at that. But who knows, there might be a ton of romance in here, so we'll see. So this was actually another fantasy recommendation, also on the Reddit post, and I was looking for similar books to Robin Hobb. This came up, and so this was on my radar, and I was just surprised to see it at the Ripped Bodice. And so I'm very curious to see if there are any similarities with Robin Hobb in her books, as well as whether or not I'll hate it or love it. All right, next up, I got this trilogy, and this is the spinoff of another trilogy that I really loved and really liked. And these are the spinoff to the Hidden Legacy series. The first one up being um, Sapphire Flames, Emerald Blaze, and Ruby Fever. Let's talk about these covers for a second. You know, they're just full of camp. You know those covers that you see in your aisle just screaming in your local Walmart or CVS? These are the type of books I would not be caught dead reading outside in public. I actually plowed straight through these within a span of a week. I just sat on the couch, cracked one of these open, and just sped through it. It was a whole lot of fun. I really love going back into this world with all these characters, and I would definitely highly recommend reading and checking out the first trilogy first. This is a spinoff and it follows the second sister in this family, whereas the first trilogy followed the eldest sister. And this whole world, the characters, the magic and the politics that are behind it, everything about it is just so fascinating to me to read about. I would say there's sort of like a subtle crossover between Harry Potter and X-Men. In this world, the serum was sort of discovered back in the late or early 1800s or so and whatnot. Generations of families are able to produce a certain offspring that have this certain power that are only characteristic to that family. Each house goes by their last name, and so we have houses that are named like House Rogan, 
House Matheson, House Montgomery, and so on and so forth. We also have different hierarchies and tiers of powers as well. At the top, we have primes who are most powerful, significance, followed by notable, and then average. And it's just somewhat different in each household. The abilities and the powers and the magic that are explained in the series of books, it is just so fascinating to me. But again, I would definitely recommend checking out the first trilogy of the series. This series, these books, are also one of my favorite urban paranormal fantasies to read. I think I reread the first trilogy like three or four times by now, along with the Mercy Thompson series and the others. So when it comes to urban paranormal fantasy, you know, they just have a really special place in my heart, okay? They're just like my go-to pleasures. All right, so next we have my collection from Barnes & Noble. So I actually did a whole bookstore vlog detailing about the bookstores here in LA, so you guys can check that out if you guys want. But one of the first books that I got is Volume 8 in Spy Family. This is the latest volume in the Spy Family Saga, and I don't really have too much to say aside from the fact that I love this whole series wholeheartedly, and it's just such a comfort read, and I have yet to still watch the anime. I'm thinking of waiting for part two of season one to just air and finish out before I binge the whole thing, and see how far I'll catch up in regards to the manga, but as far as I know, if it continues in the same vein as like different anime and manga ratio, I think the first season will only comprise of like the first seven to eight volumes in the manga, so We'll see. So the next book that I picked up is this short book called Heaven by Miko Kawakami. So I haven't read a lot of Japanese literature. I saw the cover and I was intrigued and this was when Barnes & Noble had like a buy one get one 50% off and this is one of the options. I actually didn't even read what this book is about. I saw the cover and I was like, sure, why not? And so this one follows these two young people who live in extreme circumstances and they are both classmates who are both bullied by other classmates. That's pretty much all I know on what this book is about. And what also appeals to me about this book is that it's extremely short. So, all right, so the next book that I got with this promotion is Tender in the Flesh. Another short read, and all I know about this book, I've been seeing it everywhere, is that it deals with cannibalism. This one has been on my TBR for a while. I know this book is also polarizing as well. So many people I know have given it mixed things, mixed reactions. I'm very curious to see where I'll fall on that spectrum. All right, last and not least, final two books in this book haul, Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata and Severance by Ling Ma. So Severance is one of those books where I have seen people talk about in like book hauls or wrap-ups and still don't know to this day what this book is about. And with Convenience Store Woman, I was just so impressed by the cover as well as the title and didn't really know too much on what this book is about aside from the fact that it's super duper short. And so that's pretty much it regarding these two books. I picked this one up like so fast on a whim is because we were leaving the bookstore, and just as we were about to leave, I saw a big table just full of books saying, buy one, get one 50% off. I was like, you know what? It's my time to shine. And I literally had like two minutes just to peruse and just browse through all of these different titles while everyone else was just patiently waiting for me. And I didn't want them to wait too long, but Sarah, Monica, and Michelle were there. And this was the day we went to all these different bookstores. This Barnes & Noble was like the last stop, but we were all very tired, we were all very hungry. I basically, essentially picked these four books up on a whim and I'm not too mad about it. All right, and so that is pretty much it regarding this book call. Please let me know down in the comments below if you have read any of these books, what books you guys have gotten recently. I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you all soon with a new video. I also did a horror, a horror, huh, horror bookstore vlog. Wow. Um, I was about to say I did a whole bookstore vlog, but I don't know horror came out. Maybe I am a horror. That's shocking.